Hello everyone. We're gonna do a fun little deck today with uh, cards from set 9. Uh, just to play around a bit, we did uh, some theme based decks with the Frieza Swaps previously. This time we're just gonna do a good stuff type deck, more of a tempo deck. Um, but we're using the starter deck Goku Leader that's coming out with set 9, which has crit on both sides. And he doesn't draw on the front, unfortunately. But he does have an interesting ability to awaken fairly early. If you have a 25k power more universe 7, you can awaken. Or if you have 4 or less life, you can awaken. It's only a draw 2. It's not an untap, but that's okay because he doesn't draw on the front. He also has a Warriors of Universe 7 tag, which means that all of your universe 7 cards don't have a specified cost. Um, on his backside, he will get to draw on the swing, and when he swings, one of your Universe 7 battle cards in play gets plus 5k. So that's kind of relevant, and like I said, crit on both sides. A lot of times they don't do crit on both sides, especially free crit, so it's nice to see that. And he's a red leader, which is pretty relevant for a lot of good cards in the game, which is why we're doing a mostly red deck with a little bit of blue stuff to help the deck out. Um, we're running three of the uh, expansion seal tournament uh, pack Broly's because we want to basically scout our opponent for topos and cards like that and uh, all their counter plays before we do our own plays. So realistically, even though it's a one drop, it's not a turn one play, it's a way of using our energy in a way that punishes our opponent or forces them to use their energy in a way they don't want to. So we have three of those. Odds are if you have multiple turn one, you're going to charge one. Uh, we have four of the trunks. This is an easy turn one play for a deck like this. Early pressure, early crit, early uh, life manipulation. Uh, two of the Kabas, just because it's helpful in matchups where your opponent is at five and they're not awakened, it lets you put in position of, am I going down to three from the swing or am I stopping the swing? But a lot of time it's also a charge. Really, you'd rather have the trunks as your early game plays. Uh, next, we have uh, for these Goku Super Compass, it's a Universe 7 leader. We can use this at 5, which is good because a lot of time we're going to wake it way before 5 energy. So that's helpful there. 3 to Nile of Hope, or Red Leader. <laughs> Why aren't we going to use Nile of Hope, right? 2 of the uh, Supreme Kai combo that gives you Double Strike because uh, we are using. Uh, a crit leader, so why wouldn't we want to add crit double strike? Uh, four of this uh, new Goku. So here's the thing with this Goku. This is our tool for awakening early. You can play this turn two. It becomes a 26k, and we can awaken right there. Bam! Turn two, we're a 15k crit. That's also going to boost this thing again. So that's pretty relevant. And since it has the ability to return to our hand. If our opponent plays a uh, battle card, we can get around a lot of those counter plays. So if they're going to counter play Vegeta the Cruelor, we can just put it back in our hand and play it again next turn. It's also very hard to deal with because in theory we could just bounce it. If it's gonna, if we think it's going to get pressured, we could bounce it when they play battle card and then use it again later. But realistically, uh, we're just using it for the awakening tool. Um, keep in mind, since it is a Universe 7 card, we can play this for 2 red. We're really charging red energy, we're not charging blue energy, but it doesn't matter that this is a multicolor card, because of its Universe 7 tag. Next we have 2 Cease to Exist. It costs 3, it's a little bit on the higher end for this deck, but it can just flat out kill 2 cards, ignoring Barry there, 25k or less. So that's pretty relevant. And it's not clunking in our hand because this is one of those extra cards that has an active battle that gives us plus 5k. Uh, next we have four pans. It's a decent blocker. It's going to give our leader double strike as another means. It's helpful against some, some of the decks we're going to see in the future. For example, with uh, this expansion set Surge Piccolo with Gogeta is going to be a thing. So having non-hand defense is relevant so blockers are going to be useful in that case so there we go barrier blocker will definitely help in that matchup realistically you're only playing one or two a game because we're not cheating this out with a, with a 
Wow, familiar bonds. Why am I saying Carfield play? <laughs> so if you have multiple in hand, you're going to charge one. Early game, you're going to charge one. No big deal. Four Chompas, just more source of crit. If you wanted to tweak this deck around, you could go down to so one Supreme Kai, four Chompas, or three and two. I don't think you actually need six double strike generation, especially with the pans. So if you really want to trim some of the fat, remove one of these double strikers for another card. Two for seeing hits. This is more of that hand manipulation stuff. Uh, for example, let's say we Broly our opponent the previous turn. And we get everything out of their hand that would interfere with for seeing hit. Then we can cast for seeing hit on the next turn. Or even on the same turn, depending on what our energy is. So it's a great way of scouting. Uh, realistically, you're going to play maybe one a game. So you would charge this early once again. I'm just giving people an idea of the type of energy. Also, you would also charge one of your double strikers early. Because you're only going to play maybe three in a game. So just keep that in mind for your charging of your energy. You'd also probably charge a cease early because you're only playing one of those a game. But it is a 5k combo, keep that in mind. So don't just think of it as a uh, blank card. Oh, we're running four topos. I mean, if you're running red energy, you're running topo in some amount. And we have uh, two of these Vegetas, clean weaknesses. Um, so keep in mind with this once again, this is a Universe 7 card. So of this deck, we haven't really seen a lot of Universe 7, but it is another one. So it is boosted by our leader when it swings. So this is going to swing as a 24k a lot. 24k single is not big, but it, it helps because it has that one extra combo your opponent needs to not take the life. It also means that if for some reason we did charge blue energy, we can use blue energy to play this card. Uh, three of our Master Roshis. This is just another negate in the deck to go with the Topos. We picked this over the extra cards because we wanted cards that we can combo with if we do tap out. Also, this is after it negates, it can be comboed from the field. It's another Universe 7, so in theory, early game, you can negate with this. And if you're already awakened, you can make this a 10k and swing with out on your opponent early. And since we are a Universe 7 leader, uh, this card can be played without caring about the blue. So we can play with our red energy. Next we have three of these freezes. So this is another way we're going to punish a lot of the counterplay players. Is we have three of these freezes. It's a counterplay when your opponent's going to play a battle card energy cost three or less. You can return it there their hand and play this card. Uh, topo would still negate, but at least you could stop its auto. So you can do it in response to a topo, and then you're advancing your board to swing with another 15. This is also another universe 7. So once again, we don't care about the blue, we can play with our red, and it also gets boosted by our leader. And with, then we have two Gokus once again, we don't care that it's blue, we can play with our red energy, it's universe 7. Good top end for the deck, and it's another card that's boosted by our leader's ability. And finally, two, uh, Trunks is. This is just a generic threat we can play for no energy, so it lets us keep our negates open. Because you're going to have draw-go games where you still want to advance your board, and that's what this gives you. And it's not like we're recurring any cards from our drop, so our warp is free game. And then next we have our side deck. Keep in mind the meta is going to be fairly open. I mean, yeah, Baby Vegeta is still going to be there. But we, we don't know what other decks are going to be out there. So a lot of this is just generic stuff you would see. So the 4th Broly, in case we face a lot of counterplay decks. 4th Denial for decks where we need that extra denial. 1 of Villager, just because there's going to be 2 mill decks. And I picked this over the Black Vegeta simply because against the cooler deck, the Black Vegeta doesn't do as much. It's also a target that can be with the cooler negs, which is going to give them more mill against you. So realistically, you want something that's not going to hit the board that puts cards back if you want to uh, play against a cooler mill. And it also still works against Geneva mill. It also can snipe a card from your opponent's drop. So in theory, in some matchups where you really want to stop a card in their drop from going off, like for example, the Android chain's going to deal with the drop area. That's where that's helpful.
A third seems to exist, just another good removal. It can hit barrier stuff, so we have that in the reserve. Two uh, Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan. It's good against a lot of Swarm strategies and Pan strategies. Um, a little bit of the Demigra, because the Poutine Gravy play uh, comes off of a non-keyword skill. Uh, also, uh, against Yellow Baby, it works against them playing the baby off the Moo, not the Moo itself, but that's useful, and of, of course Hot Shock. So, you want this against Hot Shock, obviously. Uh, two Taos, realistically, you can remove the Taos. This deck does not draw a lot, so I guess you could be afraid against Hand Destruction decks. But, realistically, the way I see it is it was added against Topos a little bit more. But considering we have the freezes, we probably don't need against Tobo, so it's just there for hand destruction matchup. So realistically, another one of these could become another villager. And then the other one can become another overrealm card, like a uh, Mira, for example. Or just uh, the next card we have in the deck, the Haru Haru. Good against the yellow matchups. Just a good aggressive body that also lets us untap our energy. Just be careful if people do have Cold Bloodlust in the Broly matchup. I've definitely been punished by that. Three TNs for any blue deck. It's just to punish them. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of relevant blue in case someone's still playing Geneva too, you never know. And two Foos, just good against heavy negate decks, good against uh, uh, the Hotshot matchup also. But the side deck can change. It's not set in stone. We're, we gotta see what happens. These cards aren't coming out until March, some of them. So we 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 don't want to say this is definitive side or anything. Sides are meant to change with the meta. But uh, I hope this was a fun little deck. It's fairer than a lot of other decks. It doesn't really have any like boss monster card or whatever you wanna call it in this game. It's just a whole bunch of little advantage cards that work well in a leader that can do work on its own. So best of luck everyone. Uh, next time we'll probably go over some uh, uh, green or yellow leaders, just waiting for them to be added to the deck builder before we go over it. That's why uh, you haven't seen any green yellow stuff from me. Because even though I could do a little paint thing like I did before, I think we can wait to actually see the reveals now. Bye everyone, have a great time and have fun whatever you're playing.